Hello everyone. There are two main wills you can serve. God's and yours. Which will you choose? In Gethsemane, Jesus had to choose. He did not want to go to the cross. It was not his will. He said so. But what did he choose in the end? He did not choose to do his own will. He chose to do his Father's will instead. He chose what he did not want to do, his Father's will. He didn't want to do it, but his Father did, and he chose his Father's will. In this way, he denied himself, just as he taught us to do. You won't be doing the Father's will without denying yourself and your own will. Sooner or later, the Father's will is going to conflict with your own personal will, your personal desires. And that's almost certainly going to happen sooner than later. So which are you going to choose? What did Jesus choose? How do we know the Father's will? God's word is known to us when the Spirit of God comes into our hearts. God only gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey Him. When we yield up our bodies as living sacrifices to God, just like Jesus did, we know God's perfect will. And His will is for us to be like His Son, to be conformed to the image of His Son, and when the Spirit comes into us, we experientially come to know Christ himself, the full knowledge of the truth. And what Jesus is, is what God the Father wants us to be. That's his will. God's word is a seed, and Christ is formed in us, and we are begotten of God in this way. For this reason, those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God, the children of God, and that is the only way. There's no faking it. So what are you going to do? Try and outsmart God so you get to do what you want, what you like, what pleases your personal desires? Are you going to plot, plan and plot to do your own will and then declare by an act of your own will, this is the Father's will? Just to get men in the world to believe you? And, and then you suppose this somehow validates your conspiring heart? Some try this little game. Many do. And they end up believing their own lies. People find all kinds of deceitful ways to excuse themselves from doing the Father's will. But you can't fake it. So there's no use even trying. Perhaps you will fool yourself. And maybe some others. But that is not the tiniest chance that you're ever going to fool God. It's just not going to work. So why would you even try to justify yourself in what you conspire in your heart or dream up for excuses for yourself in order to do what you like? And judge for yourself that it's all fine and dandy. 
especially when it's God who justifies, not you, and when it's God who judges, and not you. You see, people want to serve themselves first. And so they conspire in their minds how to get away with this and yet serve God. They want to have their cake and eat it too. But you can't. You won't get away with it. You are only deceiving yourself and believing your own lies when you do such things. No one can serve two masters. Or you will hate the one and love the other. You can't serve yourself as one master and God as another master. When you play this little game to make sure your own desires are fulfilled, just which master do you think you're going to end up loving and which one you're going to end up hating? In the end, there is only one thing which is going to matter. Only those who do the will of the Father will enter the kingdom of God. Jesus stated this plainly. His word expresses his will, and his word is the bread of life. So if you want eternal life, you must consume this bread, and you consume this bread by doing it, by doing the Father's will, which is expressed in his word. You must obey his word, his word of truth, and his final word of truth to us is his Son, Jesus Christ. God wants you to be conformed to the image of his Son. You can't fake it. There's no easy shortcut on the narrow way that leads to life. There's only one way, the way of Christ, taking up your cross and following him, walking in his footsteps. There's no use conspiring in your mind and heart how you can get away with doing whatever you like with your life just to satisfy your own personal desires. Your will and you're the master. God will judge the thoughts and intentions of your heart on that day. You're not going to be fooling God with conspiring ways and excuses you make up for yourself. You either serve your own personal desires or God's. What will it be, the passions of your self-serving flesh or the desires of your God? Who will you serve, yourself or God? Who will be your master, yourself or God? Who knows what is best for you, you yourself or God? Who knows what is best for his children, the father or the child? You can't have it both ways. No one can serve two masters. Who will you choose to serve? Whose will are you going to please? Yours or God's? God's children have direct access to him through Jesus. He makes his home in them. The Father lives in his children's hearts, truly. Because they know the Father, they have eternal life. Because to eternal life is to know the only true God, our Father. And he makes his will known to his children, and his children are those who are led by the Spirit of God, who is Spirit. God does not know fakers and imposters, and on that day, 
He will judge all mankind through the man he has appointed, Jesus. And on that day, Jesus will say to the fakers and imposters, these self-appointed Christians, Go away. I never knew you. So if go away, I never knew you is what you want to hear, continue conspiring in your heart to do your own will and excuse yourself from doing the will of God. Dreaming up excuses for yourselves, rationalizing of things to suit yourself, and so you become a faker, a poser, an imposter. Because your fake Christianity might fool men, but it most certainly isn't going to fool God. And what's going to matter in the end? Whether you fooled some men in the world, and maybe including yourself, or whether you did the will of God. Because you ain't going to fool God. But if you want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant, you actually need to truly and honestly do God's will, not your own. There's no faking your way to eternal life. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. No pretenders allowed in the kingdom of God. But for many, this message will do absolutely no good to the pretenders who are bent on pretending. There are people like this. You can't reason with them. Can't be done. And they're represented in scriptures by the Pharisees that Jesus was preaching to. Nothing got through to them. Nothing. Jesus himself couldn't get through to him, them. They were fakers, posers, and pretenders. They conspire in their hearts and excuse themselves accordingly. If you must choose between truth and your own desire, will you choose the latter? just to suit yourself. When your heart is in darkness, how great is the darkness. Pretenders will continue pretending, faking because that is who they are, and that's all they know. They do this because they seek only to fulfill their own fleshly desires. But perhaps you do diligently seek to do the will of God, and not your own, and you will actually do it. Then it is you who is a light in this world, a light the imposters cannot fake. God is light, and his children who actually do walk in the light are sons of the light, being sons of God the Father, who is light. If that light is in you, how great is the light. If you do the will of the Father, the world in darkness will see the light that you shine into the darkness. The world needs to see it. Do not hide your light under a basket, but do the will of the Father, that men might see the power of God. God bless you.